Yeah, good night, guys. Adam here, another tutorial. This time on Flight Sim Commander. Uh, it's a flight planning tool. Create your uh, flight plans and routes. I've got a mate here starting off and uh, just going to show him how to do it, what it's all about. So I've got the program installed, it's open. I'm running on version 9.5.1. There's a couple of things. Window, options. And come over here to choose your data for FSX or P3D or whatever you want. That'll be your startup. That's where it will save your flight plans to. This one here comes in really handy. You can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel. And the rest of it is pretty straightforward. So I can zoom in and zoom out. Otherwise you've got to come over here to this bar here. And do it that way. So basically, it's a tutorial on how to create a flight plan. We'd like to fly from Melbourne to Brisbane. And how we zoom in really quick is to and to centre on a uh, particular place. Left click on the top left hand corner of any particular area. While you got your left click held down, just drag it to make a rectangle, and then release the left click. Okay. To zoom out, you just mouse wheel back out. Mass wheel up, which is uh, pretty good. Like I say, the mass wheel, you've got to center a region first before you can start mass wheeling in. That's okay. So, what we want to do is Melbourne Airport. We head up here to the show flight plan box. You left click on it. Insert ICO code departure destination. If we had a full route, you would enter it in here, but we haven't, so we'll just go YMML. And if you don't know the ICO code for your destination airport, just find it. It's Gold Coast. Brisbane, and you'll always see it here in white, YBBN. And I'm saying that because you might want to leave Brisbane one day and head over to New Zealand, and you're wondering, well, what's the airport code for Auckland? All you got to do is zoom in, and it's in white. If you hover over it, it tells you there, Auckland Airport. So it's NZAA. Okay. So we'll go back to Brisbane. As you can see, we're footed in. That's all we really need at the moment. We want to take high altitude airways. We press OK, left click. That gives us a direct route. Now to turn that into a more usable route, we head up here to the high out plan. Left click on it and it will calculate a proper route using the high airways, nav aids and fixes and so forth. Okay, now that is enough to get us started if need be. But what I like to do, and it helps if you are using Advanced Unicom, is head up to SIDS Stars Trans button, left click, hover over SID, and then go select, left click, 
Now, Sid stands for Standard Instrument Departure from Melbourne. Once you've worked out what the runway should be, in this case we'll just use runway 16. And we would like a non X1 departure. Now, I already know that, but if you didn't know that, and you're thinking, well, I want to leave Melbourne, but I've got no idea what SID I want to use. Just to them in a bit. <laughs> At any time you can remove this box again just by pressing that. That's a toggle for on and off. Alright, as you can see our route goes to Nonex, our first one here. Or to Casey. Head back up to SID. Over. And then select. Bring it over here and go select all. And it shows all the SIDs available for that airport. What we want to do is zoom down here to where our flight plan leaves the area. Sometimes the nearest waypoint isn't on a SID that heads from the airport. From then there's a little bit of swapping and changing around on the flight plan. But uh, we've got a non X1 departure here which heads straight to Nonix, so that's the one we'll be selecting. Capiche. So we unselect, runway 16, Nonix 1 departure, add to plan. Okay, so you've done that, and you've got a big squiggly line here. It's pretty much easily fixed. Head back up here to toggle our flight plan. There's Melbourne. The purple violet colours. There the SID. And you can see it goes to Nonix and then it comes all the way back to Melbourne and then back up to Nonix. Just click on Melbourne, ML. Left click and then right click. Delete in. Melbourne. Zoom out of touch and it's gone. Okay, so we'll be leaving here, heading up over and in. Straight up. The same principle works for these stars. Zoom in a bit. Toggle that away a bit. Come down here to start, select. Bring it over here, select all. If you're coming from the north, you'd pick one of these two. Coming from New Zealand, you'd pick a saver entry. We're coming from the south. We've got two options, Gold Coast or Blacker. As you can see from our flight plan, we go over Blacker anyway. It's already included in our flight plan. So we want to unselect all, and we look for the Blacker arrival. That's the very first one. If the winds were favouring runway 19, we would go down here and pick runway 19, blacker. And as you can see, it can take both runways. We'll stick with runway 01, so remove that, add the plan, and there's our route. Same thing again. Blacker movie, blacker movie. So we'll just simply find that. Usually find it at the very start of the star. Here we go here. So we just move this, delete it, left click, right click, and then delete. That's fixed it up. Alright. You can change the flight level, do something more reasonable, flight level 350, the rest of it's the same. We won't worry about a transition because it lines are straight up. We'll select that in the aircraft. Uh, apart from that, I think 
like I say, you really can't right click on this screen unless you want to put a virtual waypoint in, which doesn't really help. Left click, hold your left click down, rectangle, zooms in, mouse wheel up, zooms out. You can go all over the world, but it will only zoom out so much. Now, to keep going all over the world, you just got to left click on a spot and it will center into the screen. Once you've got it whereabouts, you just draw your rectangle, start zooming down. And there's Frankfurt. We want to now, it's all set up. What we want to do now is go to flight plan. We want to save as. And because we are saving for the Airbus Extended, the flight plan must end in 10 letters, not 8. So we just put zero 01. 02 or 03 as you can see down here and then go save and that would save into the plan flight plan folder for the aircraft and yeah it's basically what you need to know to create a flight plan it's pretty simple once you get the you had a different aircraft database here which really isn't very accurate from memory uh, what it can do is just estimate your fuel usage and trip time if if that's important here uh, you can import or include certain holds in your flight plan more on that later this here will estimate how much fuel you'll need for the aircraft you just selected in this case it's a triple seven and it's saying we'll need 18 ton basically for the trip and that there shows the compass rose on the screen there the approach gives you different information about different approaches to the arrival airport which does come in handy if you're doing a VOR DME approach, or if you're doing an RNAV approach, it gives you all this information up here. And select taxiway and parkings. Hardly ever used it, but it is there. I'm pretty sure it draws lines on. You've got to select what uh, taxiways you've been cleared to go on. And it might draw some lines there. See so yeah, your trails lines there. Look, it's pretty nifty. There's your parking spot here. Um, airport information, the same thing gives you information all about your airport. Here's connect to FS. Once you've connected to FS, this is not so much good in a complex plane like the Airbus A320, but it works well for your little King Air 350 once you've taken off just put it on heading select mode in your autopilot and click on this auto heading button and this program will take control of your aircraft and fly it alright there's uh, this navigation window Tells you information, real real time information about your flight. Because yeah, you're, or yeah, you might use that. Unfortunately, it comes in handy if you had a second screen, you can put it on. But you'll work all that out. I normally close them off. And uh, yeah, black box I don't use. VFR. The information's all great, it's just I don't use it. You can download the weather, 
matter of clicking the uh, button there, left button. If you hover over it, it should tell you right at the bottom of the screen there, the blue screen, it says winds 340 knots, cloud visibility OK, temperature 21, dew point 9, QNH 1022. And uh, yeah, if you zoom out, it gives those diagrams a little bit bigger. You can see here. So, yeah. And then. The yeah, other important one was online. We want IVO and a left click on download current data. And this will allow the program to see whatever aircraft is in your vicinity. And that will show up as little planes or something from memory, I can't remember. These purple lines here are the uh, sectors for Australian airspace. It won't show all the aircraft only within 40 nautical miles of your aircraft. But, uh, yeah. So that's how you do it. If you have any questions, just ask. Alright mate, good on ya, see you. Thank you.